Hey, it's Steve, and this is Ian, and this is Henry, the star of Superpower Dogs here at the Science Museum of Minnesota. It's the new Omni Theater movie, which actually for us opened just today. This is Isaac. Isaac's here also. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now, Ian, yes. you are the owner, would you say, uh -huh. or trainer? How would you say? I'm all everything. Mm -hmm. Owner, handler, trainer, best friend. How, how old is Ian? Or you're I'm, Ian. I'm, I'm, hey, Ian. I'm, I'm 61. <laughs> you're 61, Ian. But how old is Henry? I'm Henry, sorry. Henry's about seven and a half. Okay, and what yeah. kind of puppy is Ian? Uh, is Henry. Henry. God, I'm going to do that all day today, guys. Just don't worry about me. Right, Isaac? I'm sorry, Henry. How Henry is a purebred Border Collie. Okay. Uh, he's what's called, a, a, in the Border Collie world, he's referred to as a red and white smooth coat. Mm -hmm. uh, most people are, are familiar with the black and white rough coated dogs. You see them all over TV and stuff like that. Okay. He's a little unusual in the big world, but in, in Border Collie world, that's completely normal. And he is like a... He is a search and rescue dog. He is an avalanche search and rescue dog. Mm -hmm. Together, we're a senior team with the Canadian Avalanche Rescue Dog Association. We're based out of Whistler, British Columbia, where I'm employed okay. as a professional ski patroller. I've been doing that oh. for 30 years. I got my first dog in 1993. Uh, he was also a border collie, a black and white rough coated one, but he had the floppy ear version. Um, and I just decided this was the breed for me, even mm -hmm. though my favorite breed is a German Shepherd. I love okay. German Shepherds, but you know, when I look at my lifestyle, the things I like to do, my physical size, mm -hmm. I'm just too small to pack around a, yeah. a big... Because you, know, you carry, so what, what does yeah. it mean to get the, an avalanche search and rescue dog? Well, his job is, uh -huh. I mean, we respond to subjects that have been caught in avalanches, mm -hmm. right? His job, his specific job, is to indicate through a change in his body language where scent is rising up through the snow okay it's my job to recognize that indication right so it could be just a little bit of a head turn that might be all you get or if it's a really heavy scent uh the person's not buried very deep there's a good wind blowing it might be full on head down dig 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 wow. but his job like sort of you know not the legend is it's not his job to dig the person no. up his job is to show me where the person's buried and then i bring the crew in with the probes okay the long skinny pulls poke 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 and then the shovelers come in and what, so, out. like, uh, how many times have you had to actually go out and do a rescue? With, with this dog, only yeah. once. Only once. Okay. Yeah, so that's yeah, a good thing. That's a really good thing. Yeah. You know what? And it, it brings up an interesting point. Like, you know, you, you'd like to think that you're out there doing that work all the time, but that means that somebody's got caught in an avalanche. Yep, that's bad. And I've been in avalanches, and they're not. They're I not can, like, I can, I can't even guess what it's like, just because it's like, yeah, it feels to me without knowing. It seems is it kind of like what is that the same sensation where it's like too much water and you're almost drowning? but it's snow, it's freezing. Is it that, or what it's is a, that like? It's a helplessness. Okay. You, you ha, you're, it's like, I don't know, white water rapid. Yep. Yeah, being stuck in a rapid okay. where you have- No control. No control, you're just, okay, I'm in this, and God help me if I get out to the end of this thing, right? Yeah, good. Um, so Henry's, you know, sort of claim to fame uh -huh. is, uh, we got called, this is spring of 2017. Okay. We got called out to a backcountry avalanche, not far away from Whistler. Uh, about a half an hour helicopter ride from where I actually work. And um, there was already a whole bunch of people there working. But unfortunately, this gentleman who had the best of all the equipment, he had his transceiver in his side pocket rather than strapped to his body here. Oh, so he couldn't reach it? Well, no, It you, when you set out on a slope, you set your transceiver to transmit. So it's giving mm -hmm. out a signal. But this particular model that he had was shown to be, it could be switched to receive with not too much difficulty. Uh -oh. And that's what happened to him. Um, somehow, in all the jumbling, tossing around, all of that stuff, his transmitter got switched to receive. Ooh. And the people that were there, and there's a lot of people there uh, that could have found him had his yep. equipment been working properly. The sad addendum to that whole story is the fact that he was probably dead before mm -hmm. the avalanche even stopped moving. Oh, really? Okay. He got dragged over some cliffs, through some trees. Uh, his air, he had an airbag pack. Like I said, this guy had the best at everything. Mm -hmm. He was experienced, trained with trained, experienced people. But you know, that's why they call them accidents. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, three hours later, you know, Henry, we we come in at the top, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, and we're working our way back up again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually walking off to go investigate something else, and he on his own walked down to the site and. He is new. Well, he, he dug the guy up, and by the time I got there, he had the guy's arm in his Ooh, mouth. Okay. And was... So, but for Henry, like, what is training? Is it is it a strict way that you have to be with tra Henry? Is it? Well, it's. Is it's he allowed big... to sleep on your bed? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Wow, but, that's but, good. But, but but does he? No, he doesn't. Okay. Because once I start rolling around, yeah. he's like, you know what, I can go on the floor and have the place all to myself. Get this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's the, the point you brought up. I mean, there's somewhere between like a police dog, okay. you know, that lives most of its life in a crate or mm -hmm. it's at work, and a, and a pet and a house pet. Okay. Right? I mean, we need these dogs, as you've seen here. We need these dogs to be social. We need to be happy mm -hmm. about looking for people. So, in that, if that's going to be the case, then it's good if they like people. Yeah. My first dog, I had a completely opposite. I, you know, I was very protective of him. He didn't. Uh, you know, see like, people, he didn't interact with other people, he didn't play with other people. And, you know, through my progression, my development as a trainer, I've sort of changed my way of thinking. Yeah. This is the dog that's resulted from it. So, because it's basically when he's searching, he's playing. Yeah, they, they don't know the difference. No. You know, it's, it's all a game to them. Mm -hmm. um, we try and set up the training every time, especially when they're young, you try and set up so that they finish on a success. Mm -hmm. But as the dog gets older, you have what's called negative result searching, uh, okay. where the dog will search for a couple of hours and not get anything. Yeah. And I mean, for Henry, because he comes from a highly, highly uh, bred line of work, all these who you know, love to work, for him, really, the work is the reward. Yeah. You know, when you get to the end and you're, and you're ragging him, you're doing mm -hmm. the tug thing, he's sort of like, yeah, no, this is not a bad game, Dad, but you know, can we just get back to the searching part of it? Yeah. Right? So, yeah, he's like, I don't want to do this whole, you know, throwing around. He's like, I want to look for something. Yeah. I'm on a hunt. Yeah. Well, because well, that is what it is, right? We're, we're capitalizing the dog's prey drive. Exactly yeah. like what a wolf would do when they go out hunting. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same instinct that we're trying to exploit for searching. So when we come to Omni Theater here at the Science Museum of Minnesota, what should we be looking for with him on the screen? Is there anything like fun that we should maybe look for, or maybe like something that we could see uh, that maybe like you would notice, but other people wouldn't? Like, not really. I mean, okay. all the, the stuff that you see him do in the film is stuff that we do in our video here. The helicopter stuff is a little bit unusual. Yeah, you know that usually only. You don't go to helicopter every day, just no, just for fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, that usually typically gets like once a year or something that's yep. recurrent recurrency training. Mm -hmm. um, and really you would only use that, I mean, it's in the movie because it's a, you know, it's a part of the job and it's very dramatic and all that stuff and it makes for some great uh, cinematography. But nevertheless, um, everything else is the stuff that you see us do, riding the snowmobile, riding the chairlift, running between my legs, riding on my shoulders, that's all stuff that he does in his everyday mm -hmm. So riding on your shoulders, does he like that or does he just kind of get used well, to it? Well, he would rather be running, Yeah. right? But yeah. if you've got a distance to go and you're trying to save his energy for yeah. the, the actual work part, then I'm gonna put him on my shoulders okay. and carry him. Okay, Yeah. well, thank you very much, Ian. You're this most very welcome. Cool. He's beautiful. And uh, come to the Science Museum of Minnesota to come see the movie and to see the star of the show. Yeah, and we should mention yeah. that this film is opening the new IMAX mm -hmm. theater. Yep. Um, the new, they've gone, they're one of only three theaters in the world now that have got this digital technology. Oh, yeah. That's... So even if you've seen an IMAX film before, come to this one because yeah. it will blow you away. The, the imagery is you know, incredible. Seeing it this big right there in front of you in yep. 3D is an experience not to be missed. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And thank you so much, Ian. You're most welcome. Thanks, Seth. Isaac, nice meeting you.